They're still in love. They, they haven't left their first love. That's the hot. One speaker at a time. We've got to stay hot. Here we are today, paradise in our church. 30th of the 6th, 2024. Brother Dave's visited here today. Let's give Brother Dave a hand. <laughs> hey? It's good to know you're in the beloved. That's a great asset, isn't it? To know you're in the beloved. You know that you're part of the family of God. Glory to the Lamb. The Galilee Lamb. Hey? Wonderful as he died on the tree at Calvary. What's going on around us? That's our usual prelude, isn't it? What's going on around us? No recordings, please. Uh, what's going on around us? Yeah. Glory to the Lamb, eh? Well, there was a... We had a couple of clowns uh, the other day. I say these things because it's a good... It's a good uh, comparison to the light, isn't it? And where we are at the moment in the world, in Christ, how far off is Jesus? I would say he's around the corner. You got these two clowns, they got an Uber, bashed the driver senseless, took the car, BMW, and drove off. Unheard of. It's unheard of. Right? What's that tell you? It tells you about respect. There's no respect. There's no respect for not just the authorities, not just the police, not just... Uh, owners of property is, there's no respect anymore for humanity and the devil is licking his lips the devil loves them he loves where there's no respect or someone slighting Jesus you know churches slight Jesus all the time with their attitudes you know their uh, MSG they they add to food, you know, to get, make it taste good. And they add a bit of rock and roll or whatever. They add the strobe lights to the churches. They add all the um, uh, entertainment. They add in uh, cushy doctrines to make people feel good. And, but they subtract. They subtract. The realities of hell, the realities of heaven, and the realities of sin. It, it, people don't want to talk about sin, you know. It's a no-no in the last days to talk about sin. You, get, you hear this, oh, we all got our sin, but that's not the scriptures. The Jolly Baptist would say, everyone sins. We're not called. We're not called to sin. We're called to salvation. If we continue on in our sin, why would you bother getting saved? What's this? What's saved? I mean, what is that? Uh, Luke four eighteen tells us very clearly, doesn't it? If we have our Bibles and we want to look at that, as I'm. Um, Speaking, Luke four eighteen makes it clear what Jesus came to do. And there's nothing about money. There's nothing about becoming millionaire. There's nothing about becoming famous or popular. He came to preach the gospel to the poor. Because the poor have got the wrong idea. And I mentioned that in the Philippines. I said, you're getting the wrong idea. The gospel's not about money. The gospel's not about money. Hey? 
it's not about gain. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is about salvation. Ultimately saving us from us. Saving us from us. Because the biggest problem we have is not the devil, it's not people, it's ourselves. And I was the first to put my hand up uh, when an Aboriginal brother told me about Jesus. I knew I was the problem. I mean, Michael Jackson knew that, didn't he? And was he saved? Michael Jackson knew. He wrote the song. He said, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. You know, you tell that to these Christians, that word Christian doesn't sit right with me, but you tell that to them and they get very upset. You know, because everyone wants to roll it over, don't they? They want to roll it onto the devil. The devil made me do it. You know, I've got a demon. I've got a demon. No, you're the demon. You know, we need to get back to the scriptures because that's where the joy is. And the joy, it doesn't last for uh, one ride out west on a motorcycle. The joy is 25 8. It's 25 8. The peace, 25 8. Perfect peace. Joy unspeakable, perfect peace. Right? When someone's riding the other way to me and I put my hand up, I'm saying, I've got joy unspeakable and perfect peace. <laughs> and you can have it too. Right? We can, it's designed for all of us. The Lord ain't, ain't racist. He's righteous. That's the difference between... Jesus uh, and religion. Religion's got all its hang-ups. But Jesus, uh, he's able, capable and available, 25-8. That's what I like about him. You know, I don't even have to use my hands. I don't even have to press a button. I just... Cry unto the Lord with my voice And he will hear me from his holy He's the glory and the lifter of mine soul Amen So how I'd love to see those two clowns that bashed the Uber driver And stole his car I'd love to see them saved I'd love to see them in glory Right? Violence against women. Well, the records show that two were, have been murdered in the last three days. It's so bad in, in Australia now, violence against women is so bad, they now have brought out an escape pack. An escape pack. Where... These women, I mean, I'm sure most of you have heard of uh, Minutemen, soldiers uh, uh, going back in the uh, Second World War. They were Minutemen and they were soldiers that would be ready in one minute to go and hit the front line. Well, that's basically, these are minute women. They're ready to grab their pack of necessities that women have necessities that men don't need. They grab that bag of stuff, one small bag with the main necessity and bolt from the violence in the house. Heartbreaking. Right? What has Australia become? And they have to move in a big hurry. How shameful... We know the scriptures say that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a shame to any people. Amen. Hey? 
I've got a jacket and on the back it says sin equals shame equals hell. That's the only good thing you're going to get out of it is shame and hell. Is that any good? Sin produces nothing good. But people don't want you talking about it. But it's the issue, isn't it? Outside of ourselves, it's the issue. It, it, it's those roots, the endemic roots that need to be um, uh, ploughed, need to be uprooted. Right? Melbourne. During the week, another shocker. What's going on? People can't cope anymore. People can't cope with the times. This is where the people of God are needed. Four dead in one hit in, in, in the one room. Two men overdosed, one woman overdosed, and one teen overdosed. Yeah, they get to prove it was overdose, deliberate, or... But there's four, four people died. Did they die in the name of Jesus? It's heartbreaking. We're playing for keeps. This is not, you know, a stint for 10, 20 years. I'll get an extra 50 years on my life. This is eternity. Eternity. It's hard to even imagine eternity. I've been around for 67 years. I tell you what, you know, it doesn't exist when you think of eternity. Right? We think it's great someone lives till they're 110. I mean, they should say survive. Because they can barely move, you know, they've got all kinds of issues. That's not living. But we will live forever if, if we do what the Lord said, if we follow the Lord. If we, if we hearken unto the word of God. If we do what the Lord says. Um, we'll go into the word in a minute, but I just want to get these things sorted. These things are good measurements, you know. Drunk driver, here we go again. He's got dangerous driving convictions. You know, this is what the Lord said would come. He's already got dangerous driving convictions. He was three times over the limit and he smashed his car into a street signage, narrow missing another car. And now he's got another nine charges uh, against him and he walked away. Like, hello, lawlessness will abound in the last days. The penalties, they got the problems because there's no penalties. You know, a lot of... I'd say a line share churched people. I call them, they're not of the church. They're churched. They're churched. There's the church and then there's the churches. The one world church is the combination of the churches. Combination of the harlot church, the Roman Catholic system. And when we read Revelation 17, we see the colours, don't we? We see the colours of the Roman Catholic vestments. You read the scriptures there, and she deceived the world. And I tell you what, I was one of them as a child uh, going to the convent and then taught by nuns, priests. And I was one that was totally deceived. I thought, no way am I good enough to go in there. And I'd see a priest and I... You know, I'd be in awe. But little did I know that, you know, they're out there. Pedos and homos. And up to all sorts of things. Playing up with the someone's wife. You know, might be a... Me and Mrs. Jones. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun. We got a thing going on. Got to be extra careful. We meet at the same time, the same place. 
Hey? That's what it was like. I seen it. The Christian brothers. I got out of school and um, a couple of years down the road and I went into the Windsor's, Windsor's Hotel and I was passing through the lounge and here was one of the Christian brothers that used to teach me, Dr Castle. He had a few women with him. And I tell you what, they were well and truly sloshed. He had his cigar hanging out of his mouth and his babes with him. Wasn't too many years later, I went to a presbytery in my hometown. The Lord took me up and he took me to the, um, uh, not presbytery, sorry, uh, it was the bookshop, what are they called? Diocese, uh, where they sell all the books and, and all the paraphernalia. The Lord guided me in there. And there was Dr. Castles again. And I went up to him and I had one of my brochures and I said, there you go. I said, do you remember me? He said, I can't say I do. And I told him who I was and I said, Jesus uh, likes to take the worst of the worst to confound those who think they're the best of the best. I said, you need to repent and be born again. And gave him that brochure and walked out the door. And he was there, as usual, with his cherry red face, you know, high blood, too much booze, hey? too many cigarettes, too many cigars. But the Lord, the Lord makes a way for everyone. The Lord doesn't want criminals in hell. He wants criminals saved. Eh? So let me say this. The Lord Jesus, uh, the Lord Jesus, he wants everyone to live forever. That's a program coming up on the TV. Do you want to live forever? Everyone lives forever. But they're asking the question because they're so far behind in the world. Do you want to live forever? It's a song. Do you want to live forever? Everyone lives forever. Either you live in hell or you live in heaven. That's not a choice to live forever. That's a definite. And once again, people don't know and they don't understand because the churches aren't preaching it. The churches aren't preaching that we're doing this for keeps. This is not some little gathering on a Sunday or a Saturday as the Seven Day Adventist or two meetings during the week in the church hall, fundraising and making doilies. That, that's not the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. As I said before, the harlot church <coughs> heading, heading the charge. The Roman Catholic system. In every town, every country town, they're in every city in the world. They're everywhere. And the Orthodox along with them. And so then you've got the mother harlot sitting there and then uh, there's daughters. She has daughters. And the daughters, I believe, are the Pentecostal evangelical uh, the seven day Adventists and the Mormons who uh, have a skew if doctrine and skew if beliefs they have prostituted their heart they haven't given themselves totally to the groom they believe they can find a teaching they believe they can find a teaching in maybe psychology, psychiatry. I had a lot of dealings with uh, these people online and face to face. 
Jesus speaks to the heart, not the mind. And once we got that settled, the psychiatrist, well, they call Christian psychiatrists. That's a, an oxymoron. That is, that is a contradiction. Even if I cut the, the Christian word slack, if I cut it slack, I don't like the word. It, it just reminds me of the One World Church. There's a big church, if you want to keep it simple, and there's a small church. There's a holy remnant, and then there's the One World Church, and it's, there's an open door. And you can do what you like, as long as you're a nice person. But I've challenged people for years to read my article on good people going to hell. They're friendly. They're good fundraisers. They're good at slapping people on the back. But when it comes to loving them and agape love, they don't have it. Agape love tells it the way it is at any cost, even death. When you walk in agape love, you will, you'll be marked not only by the powers of darkness, but also by churches and church leaders, those who would be Pharisees. Right? Pharisees were under the, under the sway of the omission, the sin of omission. They said, but they did not do. And there's plenty of them around. So the mother harlot and her daughters, the daughters, prostituting their hearts, not keeping it solely for Jesus. And uh, Jesus said, he called them... uh, Adulterers and adulteresses, being a friend with the world, you make yourself an enemy of the Lord. But he did use that word adulterers and adulteresses. Uh, playing, playing, playing the harlot with their heart under every green tree. Everyone likes the green, don't they? They like the green tree. Look, if if they behave like this in the green, what are they going to do in the dry? When things get rough? They're just going to strike up a relationship with Jesus like that. It don't happen like that. Jesus calls when he calls. It's divine uh, appointment. It's not on anyone's terms. Oh, look, I'm coming, I'll come to the Lord next year. <laughs> You're deluded. It's not going to happen. You don't call the shots. We're, we're, we're uh, bought with a prize. We've got no say in the matter. People haven't understood that. So um, we can live forever. Hey? There's a couple of young fellas in cars. They drove through the shopping centre recently into jewellery shops. I mean, like, really? Uh, I, I can't get my head around it. They drove through the shopping centre into the jewellery shop and took what they wanted and left. And what were people doing? Hey? This is the day. These are the last days. And you know why I believe a lot of people can't comprehend? You know why I believe that? Because the sun's shining. <laughs> the sun's shining. Hey? It was just like the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. The sun was shining. And then out of nowhere... 
What kind? Oh, that, that was the devil. That was the devil. No, it, it was fire and brimstone from the Lord, the scriptures read in Genesis 19. Rained. Rained. Fire and brimstone. That's how sudden it come. The sun rose on Sodom and Gomorrah. And then out of nowhere, you had this fire and brimstone raining. Everyone knows what it's like when it rains. I mean, really rains. Well, this is fire and brimstone. This is, as I've mentioned before, pregnant women, children, old people, young people, and just rain. And he spared, in the end, three. Sounds like revival, doesn't it? Eh? Revival's coming. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be before the coming of the Son of Man. They'll be what? What will they be doing? They'll be eating and drinking. And they'll be marrying and giving in marriage the three main programs on television today. Eating. SBS, the whole channel's around the clock full of eating, full of food. Eating and drinking. SBS, round the clock, banging on about vineyards, banging on about wine, eating and drinking, and marrying. And is it across the world, America, you name it, England? Love at first lust. I mean, marriage at first sight. Marriage. Three main programs on the devil vision, I mean television, today. How can we escape these realities, these, these beautiful, gorgeous truths? Okay? We can't, we can't. I, I fall in love every time I read. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. Eh? It's got down to the place, I'll finish up on this one and we'll go into the message. It's got down to the place where the courts now, they will be keeping no more criminal uh, convictions or records. In other words, someone can go and kill someone and they go and do their time, which is automatically chopped in half, usually, and then you get parole on that and, you know, they do one out of 50 years or something, and they get out and there's no record. You know, it's just like a beehive of mayhem coming up. <laughs> Unlike the Lord, isn't it? Romans 13. Love it. Romans chapter 13, verses 1 to 7. Oh dear, they should be fearing the Lord. Romans 13, 1 to 7. Right. Love it. So let's go into the message today. If you have a Bible with you, right. Bow energy, O oh son of thunder. Bow energy, O oh son of thunder. Proclaim these words I give to you today in the dry and dark land. I have raised you up to be a voice for your Father above. Hey? To be a voice. And I called you with a holy calling. People get a bit frightened, as I've said before. That word holy. Like most people don't know what it means. They think it's sort of like white garments, you know. White garments, up to the neck, short back and sides, you know, maybe a beard or with a hat on your head. Flowing garments, so to speak, flowing garments, you know. Maybe sitting in a, 
sitting in a building in the hills of uh, Guatemala or something, Guantanamera, whatever. But it just basically relates to truth. Truth. Hey? I called you with the holy coin. The prophets were known as the holy prophets. And prophets only ever spoke one thing, and that was truth. Come what may, unto their death. Unto their death. So let's go into the message today in the writings of Psalm 119 and verse 145. This is our 93rd. Amazing what you can squeeze, you know, uh, and glean out of the Word of God. Isn't it amazing? It's called The Gap. Our series is The Gap. The Gap. Number 93. Okay. On the 30th of the 6th, 2024. Starting in verse 144. I cry out with my whole heart. Hear me, O Lord. I will keep your statutes. Well, but just prior to that, uh, we have a Hebrew lettering. We have a Hebrew lettering, which is basically the nineteenth, the nineteenth letter in the Hebrew text. How to pronounce it properly? I' not sure, but I would say Kof, Q O P H, and it actually relates to a. A setting apart for a, a sacred purpose. Setting apart for a sacred purpose. I look at this paragraph here from 145 down to 152. I like to see that as a uh, definition of a called out one, you know, outside the gate without the camp, uh, suffering the reproach of the Christ. We don't suffer our reproach. We used to do that before we come to the Lord, always suffering and going into jail and, because I was doing dumb things. I was living in sin. I was a professional sinner. A fine friend of the devil <laughs> and his hordes. But then, as you go and you leave that on the call and uh, you leave that behind and you start to uh, uh, see clearly, then that's when a whole new life starts and uh, suffering and persecution, tribulation, partly because you're uh, partaking of the Word of God and also because you're in the brotherhood of the Christ. And we know the brotherhood suffers. Right? The brotherhood suffers across the world and it can only get worse. That's the good part. It can only get worse, but it won't last forever. And then the Lord will come at a time that nobody knows, nobody, nobody, not even himself, only Father will know when to send Jesus. So we're looking at a... a, a a sacred purpose. In Psalm 190, it, it covers so much, doesn't it? It's so uh, excellent. It covers so much about the Word. You know, it talks about the Word. It talks about, in a fashion of, in a manner of 
uh, statutes, testimonies, uh, the scripture. It's all the word. The law, it's all the word. And how wonderful the word is. I cry out with my whole heart. You know, separated people and sold out people uh, are not wholehearted and they don't cry out. You know, they're very casual and downbeat. Uh, I would say lukewarm. People who aren't wholehearted, you know. They're sort of like Jesus Monday, the devil Tuesday, you know. Some religion on Wednesday. Some other belief on Thursday. No, no. <clears throat> if it's not thus says the Lord, uh, it's not worth listening to. It has to be the... Thus says the Lord. Not some bloke who's been to Bible college. Straight away, if a man's been to Bible college, he, he's a man that doesn't believe God. In what fashion, uh, whether he would be psycho psychologist, psychiatrist, I struggled uh, with people like that 30 decades, or I should say 30 years ago, three decades ago. You know, there can't be a mix. It has to be pure. The pure word. The pure milk, then the pure word. The meat. There cannot be a mix. There's no mix. We don't want to insult the Lord. Right? So, it has to be wholehearted. You know, Jesus is uh, like a lot of people say that. Oh, look, I've been born again. I, I'm, I'm sealed. You know, I'm salty. The seal. I'm sealed. I'm, uh, I've been born again. You know, I've been to Bible college. You see, there's a bad thing with Bible college. When God calls a man. Uh, we have to go and look at the disciples and see what this calling, you know. It's not so much a calling today. Uh, well, it hasn't been for decades. It's I'm going to be. I'm going to be a pastor. When there are only fettuccines, really, you know, or ragolitos. But no, I'm going to be a pastor. I I'm going to be a prophet. I'm, I, look, I, I've challenged them, you know. The prophet's school, the school of the prophets in Biawa, up north. Oh, oh talk about rambling roads, rambling roads. Why she rambles, oh, nobody knows. Yeah, and there's, oh, oh, oh Steve Penny and, and the Penny Pinchers, you know, all sorts of, you know, Mr. Pringle and his chippies, you know, all sorts of, all sorts of twisties, you know, are going on. <laughs> I tell you, it, it's a Smith's crisp, isn't it, you know, as you get down the road. But I cringe when someone says, oh, they've gone to Bible college. I think, oh, you didn't have to do that. You've ruined it all now, you know what I mean? You've ruined it all. You, you didn't believe the Lord. You just had something in your mind. You know, like you sort of got legends in their own mind. There's something in your mind that said, I'm going to be a pastor. Because they see everyone looking up, you know, and he's got the microphone. The microphone. And uh, he's ruling the roost. Everyone's happy with that. Um, in part in all the compromise you can think of. When the Lord calls, um, you know, let's have a look of, of a couple of instances, hey, where the Lord calls. The Lord calls, uh, let's go down to Mark, eh? Let's go to Mark. 
That was my older brother's name, Mark. Okay. Let's go to Mark and we'll read about callings. Yeah. Got a few fishermen here. Mark chapter 1 verse 16. And as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then Jesus said to them, you need to go to Bible college. No, Jesus said, follow me and I will make you become popular. No, fishes of men. Fishes of men. They, are, they next year, left their nets after talking with their wives and family. No, they never. They immediately, they immediately, Shimbres and Ben Tiadirabha, they immediately, oh, Marakundam, Bab, 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 Jesus, Son of David, no, no, Shimarasunda, Bab, Bab, I'm feeling this. They immediately, I better go and talk to the wife. They immediately left their nets and followed him. What do you think of that? What's that say? It says they left their job. It says they gave up their livelihood. Oh no. Can't do that. They didn't go to Bible college. Hey? I'm going to make you fishers of men. I'm not going to make you a millionaire. But I came to the Lord, the Lord, give me various, various signs and songs. You know? And one of the songs was Bow Energies, Son of Thunder. And he told me when I ministered, I'd be a rib rattler and rattle the ribs of the listeners. And that went on for decades on the streets. People couldn't cope. But there's a place and a time for everything, you know. He said to me, I made you child, I made you child, and I know you well. I made you child and I know you well. And I called you with a holy calling, bow energies, O oh, son of thunder, bow energies, O oh, son of thunder. Proclaim these words I give you today in a dry and dark land, forward slash Australia, in a dry and dark land. This land is dry, it has no spiritual water, and it's dark, it's evil. It's not, as I say, oh, Australia is a Christian country. Well, oh, well, it is, but it's not a Jesus country. Amen. In a dry and dark land, I have raised you up. To be a voice for your Father above. And I called you with a holy calling. Bow energies, O oh son of thunder. Bow energies, O oh son of thunder. Proclaim these words I give to you today. The time will come when I call you home. The time will come when I call you home. But till that day, proclaim my word, Bow Energies. And we all know who Bow Energies was, don't we? We'll look at that in a minute in the scriptures. But follow me. That's all he said to me. That's all he said to me. 
That Aboriginal brother that brought me to the Lord, he didn't say, oh, you're going to be a great apostle, you know, and you're going to be a wungi bungi on the Talasasa Mabba Baba. No. He just said, hey, I don't have to worry about you, hey. You got the Holy Ghost. No Bible. He wasn't, he wasn't, I hate that word to worry. Ooh. He wasn't worried about me. He wasn't bothered. He didn't come knocking on my door twice a week or three times a week. He said, hey, you got the Holy Ghost, hey. Don't have to bother about you, brother. And that's where it started. And I just went straight out. Started preaching. Preaching what? I gotta tell somebody. I gotta tell somebody. That's a crying out inside. I gotta tell somebody what Jesus did for me. Ooh. I gotta tell somebody. Woo! I gotta tell somebody. I had to tell somebody. And then as I went along and got myself a sword and one, not just one day at a time, sweet Jesus, one scripture. I started off with three. Three scriptures. It was a hard one, the first one, very hard to understand. John 3.16. You know, most ministers don't know what that means. God gave his son for doers. God don't waste his time. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Well, that cancels out modalist and oneness, doesn't it? That cancels out Israel Folau and his family. See you later. Because they believe in oneness, which is modalism. God in three modes. No, three persons. Jesus doesn't jump in the phone box and change into Father and come back out. Then he gets back in the phone box the next day. I think it might be Holy Ghost today. Jesus is Jesus, Father is Father, and Holy Ghost is Holy Ghost, and it'll never change. You know? But Israel Folau, I mean, he's a good footballer. Very classy. But he should just stay there. You know? We just stay in our box. But the world says, get out of your box. Oh, no. You know? Stay in your box. And you'll do it well, you know? I'm a one-trick pony. I've said that for decades. I can preach, I can teach. That's me, that's what I do. That's what I've been doing for 37 years. I know me stuff. Must have been with Jesus. The man's uneducated, he's untrained. Must have been with Jesus. Right? I made you child and I know you well. And I called you with a holy calling, see? And when that happens, there's no, oh, I don't know the word of God. Oh, I'll have to go to Bible college. As one fellow said to me, he said, oh, yeah, he said, are you a pastor? I said, well, uh, I see myself as an under-shepherd and a prophet of God. I shepherd a little flock and the prophet's message is very, very simple and basic. It's hell or heaven. It's judgment. Uh, it's um, you want salvation or, or you don't. That's the basics of the prophet, you know. He's the last resort for the church in the last days. If they're not going to listen to the prophet, uh, because the prophet, no prophet has sat before any man or woman to learn the word they proclaim. And I haven't. No man or woman or church taught me. They just taught me they were bad news. 
you know. And when people get on my website or YouTube or Facebook, they're confounded. How can you produce that and not have been to a, a cemetery, I mean a seminary, you know? You can't. And at the same time, no contradictions. Hello. No contradictions. Only the Holy Ghost can do that. But so, I, I just want to really drive that nail home, you know. I want to drive that nail home, countersink it, you know, putty it, and then durathane it, you know, just finish it off nice. And that is, if you've got to go to a Bible college, did God really call you? Oh, God called me so I went to a Bible college. No, no. Because Ephesians 4.11 says, He who uh, ascended and descended gave gifts. Gave men. I call it a gift. If you read the scripture, it doesn't use that word gift. It said, He who ascended and descended gave to men. Gave some to be. So it's a gift. It was a given. It's a given. Can't be anything of this world. It's just like tongues, you know. Oh, I'm going to go to TAF and learn how to speak in tongues. Or you might be in a Pentecostal church and I reflect back 30 years or more and they're trying to make this person speak in tongues out the back, you know. Just follow me. Easy, busy, 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 buzzy. You know? No. No. It's a gift. Not everyone speaks with tongues. Not everyone's a teacher. Not everyone's a prophet. Not everyone's a, an apostle. It's a gift. And, and by the way, you know, you can speak in tongues till the cows come home. You can, have, you can speak in tongues and you can prophesy in tongues. I mean, I sing in tongues. Uh, I speak in tongues. Uh, I prophesy in tongues, but at the end of the day, the one gift in the writings of Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, it's going to save you hide from hell. You can have all the gifts in the world. It won't save us. But I want to, I want to drive that nail home about, you know, the God appointed, God anointed, you know. God does that. God hand picks. He, 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 he selects. And uh, it's usually people that you would not expect. But at the same time, when, they, when the Lord has chosen someone to do a job, they will have the goods. And they'll hold their ground. They won't need A4 sheets like this, reading off it, you know. I mean, look at, look at Francis the talking mule. Look at the Pope. He has to read. <laughs> okay, was he on acid or mushrooms? No. And he reads, reads. He reads it. Not in the heart. Not in the heart. Got to be in the heart, you know. That's where the Lord puts it. He deposits in the heart. And then you, you, it just comes out of you. You know, it just comes out of us and glorifies. It brings glory to Father and the Lord when it, when He has put something in us and it comes out. You know, it's not something I can get any credit for. It's outside of me, yet in me. It's nothing to do with me. You know, and so uh, like when Steve Irwin died and. Sister Sue and her daughter was with us, and my wife, and the Lord told me to go up to Australia Zoo and uh, give them, I ri uh, at that time I'd written 12 booklets, and it, the Lord uh, showed me the one that I was to give Steve Irwin, you know, out, out of the 12. And I packed it up. Then it was audio cassette and 
VHS. And uh, that book was Birds and Fish. And uh, out of Ecclesiastes, like a snare on a bird and a net on a fish, so the day of death comes. Suddenly, man knows not his day, and I took that up to Steve, and he was overseas. And I said to the secretary, it's very important that he gets this package. I will give it to him when he comes back. And just look at that, the book, Birds and Fish. Like a snare on a bird and a net on a fish, so the day of death comes. Suddenly. And what happened? It was a fish that slapped Steve. It was a stingray. Out of nowhere. And down he went. Amen? Amen. Man knows not his day. That wasn't long after I was up there. It wasn't that long. And so, you know, these are the things and led by the Spirit. You know, natural in the Spirit as we are in the natural. We're not doing anything. We're just poking along there. I'm just a strolling along on moonlight bay. You know, and we're just going along with Jesus. We're just walking along with the Lord, hand in hand with the man who's still the waters. And everything's sweet. Right? Everything is good. So whole heart, that's where it all starts. Whole heart. Father gives you that whole heart. The, the, the heart of the pastor is for Father. The heart of the pastor is for Father. Right? Ultimately. And then Father gives that one a, a desire to help the people. That would be forward slash, that would be forward slash uh, Solomon. He had a heart for the people. He wanted to feed the people of God wisdom and knowledge. The Lord puts that in us. It's nothing, it's not, we can't claim anything. When people say, oh, you're working your way to heaven, you know. Oh, what's that guy's name from America? Steve, Steve, Stephen. You remember that with the potter's house, bang, bang, bang. Oh, you don't have to repent. Oh, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. It's just total heresy. Absolute heresy. Right? And he's bang, 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 bang. Everything he said, just you can pull it to pieces and just put it in the bin, right? But um, yeah, the reality is, they, when you see Bible colleges involved, uh, uh, that's man. That's man. That's a teaching and a version of a man. It's not the pure word. It's just not the pure word. Right? And he seen the fisherman and he said, Hey, um, numbers are down. Would you like to become a, a pastor? Or would you like to come to my Bible college? It's only two grand. And you can put it on after pay. Nope. So that's one of the first questions I ask someone. If they say they're a man of God, I say, nicely, uh, what Bible college did you go to? And they... Sort of like, oh, I went to the, uh, the Texas Rima Bible College. That's, that's fine, no more. Uh, just change the metaphor. What do you think of the pies here? Nice. Huh? Once I hear that, I know that I can't rely on the pure, unadulterated. Word of God is not there. Now, if someone says to me, I mean, people have heard of that uh, movement way, way back. Azusa Street Revival. And they wouldn't let him into the Bible college. And you know, what happened was the little black fella, uh, God used him to start a, an enormous revival. Little black fella, they said, no, we don't want you in, in the Bible college. 
<laughs> hey. And the Lord used it. I mean, that just blew me out, you know. That just blew me out of, of my chair. I cry out with my whole heart, hear me, O Lord. I will keep, you know, he's, he's revealing, isn't he? He's opening up here. He's saying, this is it, you know. Uh, I respect you so much, I'm going to cry out to you, you know. I'm not just going to say, hey, you, mate. Hey, mate. That's what they call cops today, mate. Hey, mate. No respect. They call the minister, mate. Hey, mate. No, <laughs> you don't understand. You're talking to a man of God, you know. Someone that God's touched. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened. And now I know he touched me and he made me whole. You know, once you get that touch, it's everything. You know, it's everything. When I asked Jesus to forgive me, and I cried out, Oh Lord, the black fellow was leading the charge, the Aboriginal. Hey, follow me in this prayer, eh? Because I said, I don't know what to say, you know. How, how can I do this? Under my grace, over the obstacles, under his wings. Wings? He's not a chook, you know. Yes, he is. There's the wings there. I wanted to gather you under my wings, under my word. You Jews, you wouldn't come. Now look at your house. Have a look at it. Just check out that Gaza Strip. It's desolate. And every man and woman on earth who uh, the Lord wanted to gather and they would not come, their marriage is desolate. Their lives are desolate. Their, their churches are desolate. What do you mean desolate? I mean they've got 5,000 people but no anointing. So you've got to make up for that. So you've got to get the chorus girls in and the big bands. Smash it out. Strobe lights. Desolate. Void of, of, of the anointed word of God for the season. I'll, I'll cry out with my whole heart. Hear me, O Lord. I want to keep your word. The word here is statute. That's the word. Oh, that's what I, my will is. I will keep your word. Right? Bow energies, O oh son of thunder. Bow energies, O oh son of thunder. Proclaim these words I give to you today. Right? Now, can we go over to... Um, Let's say uh, the writings of, yeah, Matthew 10. Matthew 10. Matthew 10. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Now, Matthew 10 is a fine example of true blue calling. And um, what's to be expected? The sending out of the 12. And they've got all these instructions what not to do, you know, when you get around verse 5, Matthew 10. These twelve Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles. Do not enter the city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is in hand. Uh, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, blah, blah, blah. These were apostolic men. You see that? These were apostolic. These were his apostles. And you see what the apostle does? You got these people in churches today, they say they're apostles. 
they're no more an apostle than I am a grapefruit. They do not have the signs or the credentials of the apostle. And it says, and they're casting out demons, cleansing lepers, healing the soon. And uh, they're, they're, what are they, there's something here that really hits me hard. And it's not the casting of the devil yet and all that sort of thing. It's uh, in verse uh, 7. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And it's, it's about heaven. It's not about the world. Right? It's not, oh, when you go preach, Westfield is at hand. You know? Or the BMW business in Sydney, North Shore is at hand. No. The kingdom. The kingdom. Right? Or, and where there's a kingdom, there's a king. The king's business. The king's business. The king. What's the king's business? Jesus came to, to glorify the Father. Right? I'm just going to go to John just for a minute. We all know, we all know this verse because it's a favourite in this fellowship. John 14, 21. He who has my commandments and keeps them... It is he who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father. Really? Oh, but God loves everyone. Really? That set the siren off, didn't it? Hey? We go into verse 21. John 14. He who has my commands and keeps them, it is he who loves me. That's, this is red writing. Jesus is saying, you got my commands, right? And you keep them? Yes. He who has my commands and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me, or he who keeps my commands then will be loved by my Father and I will love him and manifest myself in him. That's everything. When you got the love of the Father and the Son and Jesus manifest himself in you, there's no moving. You become immovable, unshakable. You'll do the impossible. You touch the untouchable, right? Because of Him in you, manifested, manifested. And then it's so important. This He goes on about it again, right? In verse twenty-three, John fourteen, Jesus answered and said to him, "If anyone loves me, he will keep my word." And my Father will love him. Here we go again. This is double emphasis. And we... Sorry, Israel, Philao. We, we... Sorry, oneness, sorry, modalists. We, we... This is all about Father and Jesus, isn't it? Oh, no, no. Jesus, Jesus is Jesus, Jesus is the Father, and Jesus is the Holy Ghost. No, uh, wrong. John 14 and the verse is 23. Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our abode with him, our home. Come on. Right? Jesus and Father indwelling. Boy, I didn't know there was enough room. You know, that's fullness. See? Now, if we go over to Colossians, let's go over to Colossians, and we'll just complement that about indwelling. Let's go over to Colossians. 
and see what it says. Right? Philippians and then Colossians. Chapter 2 and the verse is 8. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophies. Philosophy. Philosophers. Right? An empty deceit according to what? The traditions of men. Psychology and psychiatry is according to the traditions of men. It goes back to the Greeks who had not Christ. Empty deceit according to the traditions of men. According to the basic principles of the world. What's the basic principles of the world? Buying and selling. Hello Phil. Phil Pringle. Hello, Brian Houston. Basic principles. We, we're not of the basic principles of the world. And not according to the Christ. For in, here we go, there's this completeness. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily and you are complete in him. Who is the head of all principality and power. Oh, the devil made me do it. But Jesus is the head of all principality and power. You see the gap? That's our series, the gap. That's the series we've been doing. This is the 93rd, 93rd part. We've gleaned the gap, the world, and the big gap, and Jesus. The one world church marries the one world government, and then over here, Jesus marries his bride, the true followers, the holy remnant. Great gap. There's a great gap. We've got to keep that gap. We can't join it. We can't have, you know, we are the world. We are the people. We don't want that. See, in this little little paddock, this little flock, we believe, united we fall, divided we stand. Because the world says that, doesn't they? The world says, the world says, united we stand, divided we fall. <laughs> but I say, divided we stand. And we've been separated to a sacred purpose. Hey? Just as the Hebrew word, the 19th letter in the Hebrew alphabet, just as it said, and we read today, I was hoping to do the whole paragraph. You know? The kuf, Q O P H. Right? Separated for a sacred purpose. That's us. Right? Come out from among them, Paul said, be ye separated. What fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? What fellowship has the devil? What be love with the Christ? There, there is no fellowship. Right? There, there can be no fellowship. We just go out there to help and, and help them understand right? let's read that word we need word for word right? word for word so we go over to Corinthians uh, where are we here Try to. What's that scripture? Uh, Corinthians, isn't it? Yeah. Eleven. Two Corinthians, chapter six, verse eleven. O Corinthians, that'll be O saints, because they were the saints. We have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, 
but you are restricted by your own affections. Now in return, for the same, I speak as to children. You also be open. Verse 14. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. What fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion has light with darkness, and what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? Right? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God, they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separated, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean. And you see this line, this next line is very, 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 very important. And it says, and then... I will receive you. You got to do all that first. Oh, what? He, you now he's speaking to the world. No, 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 no. He's speaking to the saints at Corinth. Amen. Then I will receive you. Now I'm going to make sure we get this right. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of Jesus Christ. No, by the will of God. Sorry, Israel Fellow. Uh, you got two different people there. Two different persons. And Timothy, our brother, Paul speaking, to the church. Who? To the pagans. No, to the church of God, which is at Corinth, with all the saints who are in all Achaia. What do you think of that? Oh, he's going to receive it. But aren't they already received? They've been born again. They've been sealed with the Holy Ghost. They're solely the seal. They, they've been to Bible college or whatever. No, what does that say, John? <laughs> I will tell you, Bill. No, it says 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 17. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. But he's not going to receive us otherwise, is he? And we have many scriptures that follow on. You know, Many will come on that day and say, Lord, Lord. Lord, Lord. Matthew 7. Matthew 7. 21 to 23. Hey. Lord, over here, over here. Don't you remember us? Yeah, we cast out demons and prophesied. You can't cast demons out without the Spirit. You can't prophesy without the Spirit. We cast out demons. And he'll say, go away. I don't know you. And then the hit line, the kicker was on the end. Go away from me, you who practice sin. You who practice lawlessness. See, they might have known him. They did know him. They even said they knew him. They said, We cast out devils and we prophesied. Matthew 7 21 to 23. Oh, no, don't go stay in that, Paul. People won't like you. You know what I mean? He is the troublemaker. What did they call Elijah? What did they call Elijah? They had the Arab, king of the desert sands. He seen Elijah coming. And what did he say? Is that you, my wonderful friend? Now he said, Is that you, Elijah, you troublemaker? And Elijah said, I'm not a troublemaker. You're the troublemaker. I'm trying to help the people. Everyone said amen? amen. Gorgeous, isn't it gorgeous? The word of God. Ooh. I feel good when I read the word of God. I feel good. Woo! I knew that I would now. So good, oh, so good. Cause I got the truth. Bum, 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 bum. Hey! 
Oi. That's what makes me feel good. Used to be booze. Used to be a jug of beer. I'd walk in the pub and say, Here's a jug of beer with a dash of tequila. I'd go out in the beer garden on my own, wonk wonk, half gone, grab me bag, pull out some Mullumbimby head, get into the jug again. Everyone would be looking, they said he's going on a suicide mission, this bloke for sure. And then go out, hop on me, 1976, sporty. Burrata, you know what I mean? It was burritos all the way. That's the way I lived. You know what I mean? That's the way I lived. Been there, done that. You know? Grew up like that. Me and the boys had an armory and we were only 14. Right? 14 year old with an armory. Shotgun, 303s back in that day. Okay. Automatic, semi automatic, heavy duty slug guns, you know? All that sort of stuff. Then we'd have the, the gings, we used to call them gings. And they'd hang on the side, you know, the fork of the tree and the rubbers and a big bottle of sinkers, you know? Funk! You know? No drama, you know? Just dropping birds that were the size of pinheads, you know, in the bush, just a plume of feathers, you know. And we hop back on the old AJS 500, you know. I mean, they ride scramblers today with all the, you know, high tech uh, gear. We just get an old beezer out of someone's shed and chop it up. You know, water pipe handlebars, you know. <laughs> Throw the tank, we don't need that. Just put a Victor Motormile tank on, bratta. You know, carve a bit of tread into the back tyre, <laughs> throw the front guard, chop the back guard in half. You know, we don't want this springy seat. Oh, that garbage. Big pile of rags on there, all wrapped up with Durex uh, tape. Just live that life, you know. From day one, drunk eight days a week, stoned nine days a week, concentration level minus three, brain of a small bird, right? Chain smoking. But the day come when the Lord called, I answered that call. You know, how am I going to do this? I heard him call for me. By the vessel of an indigenous man. How can I do this? Well, I don't know what's going on. I didn't even know where John was in the Bible. And he said, under my grace, under my power. Grace is power. Right? We don't need to be under the law. We're under the power of God. Under my grace, over the obstacles, and then back under his wings. Right? I heard him call again. I call you now to speak. How am I going to do this? I know nothing. Under my grace, over the obstacles, and under his wings. He spoke to me for a third time. And he said, be not afraid, because... Life is in my hands. I have the keys of Hades. I have the keys of death and life. Right? And I cried out to the Lord, forgive me, forgive me. I cried wholeheartedly. I cry out with my whole heart, hear me, Lord. Tears. Rivers of tears running down my face at the blackfellas' house. I will keep your word. The moment I said, Jesus, forgive me, then bang! I spoke with another tongue, heavenly tongue. Shut up, mother, send the mother. And our blackfellas said, Hey, that the Lord, he hot for you, brother, eh? And then he opened up the Bible and showed me John. 
the baptizer, being baptizing, I should say, Jesus. He said, you need to get under the water, you know, to fulfill the whole lot. And the, his wife, he filled up the bathtub. Bang, down I went. This is all in one hit. There's no courses. Oh, we're going to take you on a course, you know. On baptism, water baptism, so you'll know, you know what you're doing. What? Where's the faith? By faith I repented. By faith I went to his house. By faith I was water baptised. By faith I accepted the call and accepted the ministry he gave me 37 years ago. And then, all, then the mud hit the fan. Oh, wow. What covering are you under? Yeah. Oh, you know, covering. I'm not in the garage, but uh, and who are you with? You know, uh, no one's going to listen to you. You know, oh. whoo! You got to go to Bible college first, really. Bye. See ya. <laughs> if you come with us, you know, and, and join up with the Assembly of God, well, what we'll do is we'll give you. You have one of the biggest home groups. In town. No, thank you. I wasn't called to a home group, man. I was called to the world. And then the Lord confirmed it. Hey? He took, took me to Vegas. He took me to New York. He took me to London. He took me to Africa. He took me to the Philippines. He took me around this country. He took my heart and he, and he threw it away and gave me a whole new one. Hey? Bo energies, oh son of thunder. There it goes again. <laughs> Proclaim these words I give to you today. Fresh. Right? Fresh. Not following some, oh look, this minister, he's got 20,000 million in his turn. And what's he preaching? Oh, Dick and Dora, Jack and May. You know? I don't know. Some teddy bear's picnic. Now, is he preaching the kingdom of heaven? Is he preaching God's land? Is he preaching about what's coming? What's he preaching? Is it, you know, you go forward, repent and be forgiven. Repent, repent and be forgiven. So here we are. I cry out. I only got one verse out today. I wanted to do the paragraph. But you don't know what the Lord's going to do as the wind blows and where it goes and comes from. No one knows. So are they were led of the Spirit. I cry out with my whole heart. Hear me, O Lord. I will keep your word. Oh, hallelujah. Isn't that gorgeous? Hey? I think it is. I think it's wonderful. And even... Uh, Psalm 34, my favourite psalm, a great link between me and my God. Psalm 34, that's a cry out too, you know. Eagerly wanting the Lord's leading, you know, there's great happiness in trusting in the Lord. I don't, I'll go to... I was going to go to a Jimmy Swaggart Bible College. I was going to drive a Lincoln Continental. I was going to wear Italian suits. But the Lord just put the brakes on. I went straight through the windscreen and never went back. <laughs> he said, no, nah, I've got something better for you. <laughs> he had me fasting for three weeks at a time, you know, on a water fast. He had me on the street, eh? proclaiming. He had me getting spat on and stoned in the 21st century. Eh? He had me getting set on fire, poisoned, mocked and laughed at, physically thrown out of churches. Eh? And look, you just don't 
You can't buy trophies like that, you know. That's profit material. In the, you know, that's proof, perfect proof. John 4.44, a true prophet has no respect in his own country. And when I go overseas, I'm the bee's knees, you know. I'm, I'm the flavour of the month, hey? Wherever I go overseas, oh yeah. There's doors swinging open like pub doors, wanting me to speak, you know. People want to give, give me reverence certificates. Hey? Lay hands on 40 ministers in one church, wanted to lay hands on, well they did, and give me a piece of paper. Hey? I soon gave that back. But it's all recognition, isn't it? It's all acknowledging that this fellow's got something, and so uh, I'm not ashamed of that. As one bloke said to me oh, decades ago, oh, if you were a prophet, you wouldn't have to go big mountain and telling everyone. I said, well, I'm only imitating Paul. And Paul said that he was an apostle, didn't he? He said he was inferior to no one. Hey, hello. Everywhere, every letter he wrote, what did he start with? He started with, oh, I'm so humble. I'm just like a little lily. You know, I'm so humble. I'm an apostle, but I won't say I am. Just so I can please the Pharisees. who think they're humble and they're so proud and arrogant. They're worse than the devil. Let's read it. Let's read it. Paul started off every one of his letters with Paul the Apostle. Called of God through Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 12. And the verse is 11. I have become a fool in boasting. You have compelled me. You push me to this. For I ought to have been commended by you, for in nothing was I behind the most eminent apostles, though I am nothing. Truly, the signs of an apostle were accomplished among you with all perseverance, signs, wonders, mighty deeds. For what is it in which you were inferior to other churches, except that I myself was not burdensome to you? Forgive me for doing this wrong. <laughs> A bit of sarcasm comes out there. Oh, did I do the wrong thing by not being a burden? But you, you see the credentials of an apostle? These churches today, there wouldn't be one in there. You go to America, every second man and his dog's an apostle. There's not one. They don't even get it. They say, oh no, they've got this teaching that there should be an apostle and a prophet and a pastor and an evangelist and, and you know, three million uh, elders and one congregation. You know? Hogwash. God gave them to the church universal. He gave to the church. Well, a local church doesn't need all that. Especially if it's a small uh, paddock. You know? They just don't get it, do they? That's what happens when you, you don't come through the door. When you're not taught by Jesus, you get all this fuzzy bear stuff, you know what I mean? And it just doesn't work out. You're never happy. You're never happy. You're forever wandering. I was born <laughs> under a wandering star. They're singing about pastors. Did you know the pastor is the star? He had the seven stars in his hand and the seven lampstands. A pastor is like a star. He said he'd make me a star. <laughs> David Essex, wasn't it? No. I don't know. Stars are pastors. Just like in the book of Revelation, it talks about the seven stars, the seven pastors of the seven churches, 
And then he also calls them angels. Because stars are bright. They used to, you know, in, back in the day, that's how it's their guidance. The ships would be guided by the stars. And he said, angel, to, I write to the angel of the church at what, Pergamos or whatever. I'm writing to the pastor. He's not looking for the congregation's at, uh, uh, consideration. He didn't write, I want to talk to the elders and, and the congregation, you know. No, pastor, angel. Right? Pastor, like an angel. What's an angel? A created being. One guy insulted me one time and said, are you an angel? When I was out west preaching, I said, what? Give it a break. I said, I'm above them. I said, I'm a saint. I'm a son. She cut it and died. Has him a bar, umba, a fast, I'm a son. No angels ever been born again. They're still what they were created to do, angelical. Hey? Angels, strong, you know? Angels, beautiful. Angels, that, I mean, I just can't help it, it's in my DNA. Now, <laughs> angels, close to God. You've got to be careful. The beautifulest angel of all was very close to God, behind the throne with wings spread. He's very beautiful too. But he overstepped the line, didn't he? He got outed. So you've got to be careful. Oh, I was, uh, I've been born again, you know, I've been water baptised. I got a... Um, Dakes, I got a Dakes annotated Bible, you know, in a leather cover, you know, it's got rhino leather. Yeah, I must be going to heaven. No, read the book of Revelation, the lukewarm church. Ew. How'd you go with that pizza last night? Oh, I vomited it all up. I didn't want it in my gut. Oh, really? Is that what he said to one of his churches? Gee, what sort of bloke's that? What sort of leader is Jesus? He's spewing people out of the church, out of his body. That's where vomit comes from in here, in the gut. The church is the body. If you don't repent, right, I'm going to vomit you out. In other words, you make me sick. How dare you be lukewarm towards me and hot towards your buddy pound mates. Hello? Hot towards your wife and children and lukewarm towards me. Come on, man, who's the creator around here? Jesus. Creator, creation. There's a great gap in the thinking, isn't there? Wide road, narrow road. I'm on a highway to hell. Uh, uh. Left, I'm travelling the highway of holy men. It said the unclean won't touch the sides. If a man walks this road, he'll look foolish. But he will never ever go astray. Bit of slim dusty in that. Well, there'll be no line or beast upon the road. For it is for the redeemed of the Lord. I'm travelling this highway of holiness. And I'm so glad that I am heading home. I'll leave it there. I hope everyone enjoyed themselves today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.